Welcome to the Wild Fit Challenge. I am really excited that you're here right now. I'm really excited about it because I'll tell you something. This is mission work for me and it absolutely works and I'm glad that you're here at the beginning. It's hard for you to know where we're gonna be in about three months, but see, as I've done this for thousands of people around the world in over 20 countries, I have a rough idea of where we're gonna end up in three months and I know that you're gonna like it. So, let's talk about what's coming up. First, the Wild Fit Challenge, as you probably already recognize, as you've probably heard in the welcome video and some of the marketing, the Wild Fit Challenge is this wonderful marriage between really solid nutritional information and really, really powerful behavioral change, behavioral change psychology. By marrying these things two together, we've been able to create a system wherein people make changes and they stick with them. You see, this is not a diet. We don't believe in the word diet the way it's used today. A diet. A diet in the way it's used today is a temporary alteration to your eating patterns to achieve some short-term goal like fitting into that outfit for a special occasion. The word diet traditionally means way of life and every animal on earth has one. Elephants have one, leaf cutter ants have one, cheetahs have one. We all have a diet and the closer any organism is to its diet, the healthier it is. Now, there may be some little modifications in terms of food sensitivities for individual people, but what cannot really be argued is that homo sapiens have certain nutritional requirements. There are certain vitamins and minerals we need. There are certain proteins and amino acids we need. There are certain fibers that we need. There are things that we require. What this is about is doing everything we can to satisfy those nutritional requirements fully because one of the core principles of WildFit is that your health is far more determined by making sure that you get enough of your nutritional requirements met than it is by throwing other stuff out. You see, we would say to you that fruits and vegetables don't fight disease. They're not medicines. It is the absence of them that makes us susceptible to disease. An ounce of prevention is worth a ton of cure. So, what we're talking about here is creating lasting change for people by marrying up this really powerful stuff around nutrition, nutritional anthropology, evolution, natural selection, and then the cutting edge stuff around behavioral change psychology. How do we get to a place where we can undo what's been done to you? Let me be very clear. If you are coming into this program and you're looking for peak performance, you're in the right place. If you're coming into this program because you've got some weight you wanna lose, you're in the right place. If you've come into this program because you have a lot of weight you want to release, let me tell you something personally. It is not your fault. Not in any way, not in any measure. In no conceivable way is it your fault. You did not do this to yourself. You did not simply eat too much. The people who walk on the streets and say nasty comments or think them in their mind, they like, oh, maybe you should eat a little less or whatever the case may be, they do not understand biochemistry. They do not understand evolved cravings. They do not understand evolution and they do not understand you. I do, this is not your fault. What we need to do right now is undo what the food manufacturing industry has done to us. Let's be very clear that the food manufacturing industry is at least as deceitful, if not more, than the tobacco industry ever was. The tobacco industry simply manipulated people to do something optionally for fun that ended up being really bad for them. And yes, one would argue that there was a time where they knew it was bad for people and continued to manipulate them. But the food industry has done something completely different. They've taken something that is a necessity for your existence, food. They have then changed the very nature of food and turned it into non-food, addictive, nutrient empty, non-food. And then they've created really powerful marketing campaigns to take away your sense of choice. What we are gonna do now is bring back your choice. Bring back your consciousness. Make sure that it is you that decides what you're gonna eat. Let's be really clear. The food industry is using the most cutting edge psychology you could ever imagine to get you to make certain food decisions. And I wanna be really clear about this. It doesn't have to be that way. Over the course of the next several weeks, you are going to change what you observe in food advertising. And you're gonna change the way you think about food. Are you excited? I hope so, because if you aren't, you should be. And if you are, excellent, let's get started. So, let's talk about what's gonna happen this week. Are you ready? Before we talk about what you're gonna change, I wanna know, what are you afraid of changing? What are you concerned about? Are there any foods that you kinda might've, you know, binged up on over the last few days? You know, I'm about to start a program, I'll have a little of this, I'll have a little of that, are there? If there are, that's totally okay. Here's what I want you to think about for a minute though. Why? 
Why those foods? Why did you want to have a little bit more of it? And by the way, did you really enjoy it? I mean, past the first bite? Did you really actually enjoy it or did you find yourself eating it because, well, I should. I'm going to stop soon, so I just better have it. Hmm. It's different for everybody, but I want you to just get a little bit conscious about the foods that you may be apprehensive about losing at this point, that you may be apprehensive about taking a holiday from. I also want to let you know that as I remove foods away, because clearly you know we're going to remove some foods, right? There's stuff we're going to give up to improve our health. I want you to know that not one of the things that I'm going to ask you to remove has to be permanent for you. Not one. What we're going to do here is we're going to experiment with certain food holidays and then in the end you're going to make your decision about what living wild fit means for you in the future beyond this challenge. So with all of that said, are you ready? Are you? All right. This week what I would like you to do is remove absolutely nothing. I don't want you to remove a single thing. In fact, I want you to make sure you keep eating exactly the way you were eating before. If you were eating pizza, keep eating pizza. If you were stopping off at the McDonald's, keep stopping off at McDonald's. If you are already pretty healthy, keep being pretty healthy. Whatever you were doing before is what you need to do this week. Now hang on a second. How do you feel about this? I know, I know. Here's the reactions that we've seen over the years. One reaction is, Woo! <laughs> I'm excited. I was afraid and now I'm excited. All right, that's interesting. Don't you think there's something to learn about that? Then here's another reaction. Disappointment. Disappointment. Like, I came here ready. I binged up over the last few days. I'm ready. I want to make change. I ain't part of this program. I'm ready to make change. Why aren't I making any change? Isn't that interesting? Isn't it interesting that you need somebody else to tell you when to make the change? There's something to be learned in that. And then there's a third category of people and they are simply bemused or maybe confused. And that is they're going, huh, what? Don't change anything? What's going on here? What's going on here is that Wild Fit is a permanent change program. The idea here is to help you make long-term lasting improvements to your lifestyle. They're going to make for an increased quality of life and maybe even increased longevity. And so with that in mind, we're here to create lasting change. I could give you a bunch of rules right now to create short-term results in your health. I could say, cut that out, add that, cut that out and add that. And a week later, you might have some great short-term results. But then what I would be doing is like every other program on the earth, I'd be putting you on a boomerang diet. Atkins, boomerang diet. South Beach, boomerang diet. Hey, not for everybody. Are there some people that start those diets and figure it out and manage to make it stick? Sure, a tiny minority. But the average person that goes on a diet gains three pounds every time they do it because diets are by their very nature boomerang. You go out, you come back. What this is is about lasting change. And so the reason that I'm asking you to move forward into this week without making any changes is because the changes you are going to be making are internal. Now, it's not entirely true that you won't be making any changes because there are two changes that I want you to make, physical changes. No worry, I'm sticking to my word. You don't have to cut anything out. But I do want you to add two things. They are the two most important things to your entire diet. Are you ready for them? The first one is air. Now that may seem a little silly to you because you're pretty much adding air all the time, right? But I want you to think about the prioritization of things that your body needs. You see, how long can you live without air? It's measured in minutes. How long can you live without water? Days at best. How long can you live without food? Look, there's plenty of evidence to suggest out there that you can live for weeks or even months without food. Food is actually one of our lowest priorities when it really comes to the substances that our body really needs. So we start with air. So the first thing that you're going to change is you're going to take on some breathing exercises. You're going to take on a really easy set of breathing exercises and you're going to do them twice a day. It works like this. You're going to breathe in for a count of five. Then you're going to hold your breath at the top for a count of five. Then you're going to release that breath for a count of five and you're going to do that five times. And you're going to do that twice a day. So I'll do one with you right now and I want you to do it along with me. By the way, start this program as you mean to continue. So when I ask you to interact with me, interact. If you're here to do this program, if you're here to get the results, if you've invested your time and money in this, then I want you to play along with me. So when I ask you to play along with me, even if you're feeling like you'd look a little stupid because there's people around, I don't care. If I ask you to shout out an answer, then you shout out an answer. Do we have an agreement? Say yes. Say it out loud. Here we go. Say yes. If you didn't do it, I want you to think about something. Right now, how committed are you to this program? 
So all I'm going to ask you to do is, are you willing, just for the next three months, to play full out? Please, say yes. Good. So you're going to do the breathing exercise with me right now. Are you ready? So remember how it works. Breathe in for five, hold for five, release for five, and do it five times. We're just going to do it the once, but now you know that you do five sets, and then you do that twice a day. Here we go. Breathe in for five. Five of those a day, five of those at a time, and then twice a day. Do the breathing exercises. That's change number one. Here's another change. Drink. <laughs> no, no, not alcohol. Drink water. Really drink water. I'm talking about six to eight glasses of water today. Now, I'm talking about six or eight glasses of water every day. And here's what I mean by glasses of water. I mean proper glass of water. If you're very tall, they should be bigger glasses. If you're really small, they can be smaller glasses. But what I'm really talking about here is making sure that you get properly hydrated. Let's talk about both of these things, the breath and the hydration. First of all, oxygen is imperative to your very being, as you know. Secondly, when you breathe in the top of your lungs, you create stress. When you breathe in the bottom of your lungs, you create relaxation. Think about it. You and me, walking along in the bush, we see a lion. Do you, how do you breathe? There's a lion right there. How do you breathe? Do you suddenly go, a lion, look. <gasps> or do you go like this, a lion, <gasps> right? We breathe up here, we create stress. We breathe down here, we create relaxation. And one of the key principles in creating lasting health, and for those of you interested in weight release, is calm. Stress inhibits weight release. So we want to make sure that we just create a little bit of calm every single day. And so we do the breathing exercises to create calm. Here's something else you need to know. Where do you think the fat goes when you release it? Where do you think it goes, right? Like, does it just disappear? Do we burn it up into a fire? No. What happens is we metabolize or burn the carbon, and then the balance of the fat, or much of the balance of the fat, is actually released in two ways. Some of it is about water. When you burn the fat, you release water into your system because water is in fat. The other thing is, is that much of the fat gets converted to gas and you breathe it out. And so let's do these breathing exercises and stimulate the entire process. We are going to drink lots of water because we'll talk about this more as the week progresses. But as we move forward, what we're going to recognize is the body sometimes gets tricked and it believes that thirst is hunger. And so we're going to make sure that we step up our hydration because frankly, most people are walking around in the Western world at some level of dehydration. And secondly, dehydration can sometimes trigger feelings of hunger that are really the desire to eat because we're supposed to be eating food that has lots of water content in it. We'll talk more about this to come, but it's important you remember these changes. Do the breathing exercises and drink the water and make no changes to your diet. And when I say make no changes to your diet, let me be very clear. I'm saying to you, eat the way you were eating up until the program. And if you found yourself binging out on some stuff over the last few days, even stuff that maybe normally you wouldn't eat, do that too. Keep eating. Here's the, here's the ticket. If you want something, you should eat it. But wait, you might say, but there's stuff that I gave up months ago or two years ago and I, I don't want to bring that back. Well, do you or don't you? If you do, then you should. If you want to bring it back, you should, because if you want to bring it back, it means you gave it up with willpower, and willpower will always get disrupted by some event. Let me describe the way willpower works to you, okay? Willpower is kind of like, do you know what I mean by the talking stick or the conch shell, you know, from Lord of the Flies? Like the talking stick. Whoever's holding the talking stick is in control, and willpower is very much like that. So you've got your food devil, the food angel, and whoever's holding the stick has the control. And so what happens sometimes when people go on a diet is they go, I'm taking the stick and I'm giving it over to the food angel, the health angel, and they're in charge of all the decisions from now on, right? Well, all that has to happen is some major disruption, some emotional upheaval, some life event. And while the angel is watching what's going on, the devil comes along and goes, and takes the stick and goes, chocolate. We need to have chocolate. And all of a sudden, the diet's over. And so what I want you to know is that if there's foods that you've given up previously but you still crave them on any kind of regular basis, if you still want them, then you should have them. I don't want you to change your diet at all except perhaps to bring back stuff that you have given up purely out of willpower. Now, if you've given stuff up and you have no desire for it, you don't have to bring it back at all. But I'll give you an example of this. A very good friend of mine 
came and did this program. Now, he's a well-known author all over America. He's a very famous guy, very good willpower, very controlled, looks very healthy. And nonetheless, he came into the program and he goes, well, Eric, you know, I gave up Coca-Cola like two years ago. I, I don't see the need to go back to that. And I go, well, you say you don't see the need, but do you want it? He goes, well, yeah, I mean, yeah. I go, do you find yourself having to talk yourself out of it? And he goes, yeah, just about every week I got to talk myself out of it. I said, well, then it's got to come back. Well, I got to tell you something. A couple days later, he was so angry with me. He's like, Eric, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Now I can't stop. I'm drinking it all the time. I've been off it for two years. You're just a jerk. And I said, listen, trust me on this. You were going to do this at some point anyway. If I could simply suggest it to you and you started drinking it again, then think about it. Isn't it possible that some life event was going to come along and knock you off anyway? I mean, if I could simply suggest it and you started drinking it, wasn't it going to happen anyway? He's like, yeah, maybe that's true. Well, let me tell you something now. Well, on the other side of the Wild Fit Challenge, he has no relationship with Coca-Cola at all anymore, and he doesn't have to talk himself out of it. So let's get really clear. If you want it, bring it back. If you're totally done with it, you don't have to. So to be clear about the enhancements this week, there are none other than the breathing and the water. You're not to change your diet. You're to eat the way you want to eat. And in so doing, I want you to get to know yourself a little bit. And we're going to talk a lot more about this in all the videos this week. I'm going to give you a little glimpse of stuff that I want you to start paying attention to. I want you to start paying attention to the way you talk to yourself about food. You know, like you may notice you have a little voice. It's like, come on, we can have it. And I really don't think so. We're on this new health program. Yeah, but Eric said, and then you're going to eat it. But I want you to pay attention to that dialogue. I also want you to pay attention to the way food makes you feel. There's something we're going to introduce you to that's called this food timeline. There's how you feel before you make the decision to eat the food, right? There's an emotion right there. How do you feel before you make the decision to eat a non-functional food? That's a triggering emotion. That's an emotion that says to you, hey, if I'm having that emotion, I'm in the danger zone. Then there's how you feel after you decide to eat a non-functional food. That's really interesting. What you'll find very often is that the feeling that you're hoping that food is going to give you doesn't actually come from the food at all. It comes from the decision to eat it. Hmm, isn't that interesting? Then you're going to pay attention to the way that food tastes and how you feel when you take the first bite and then the second bite and the subsequent bites. And what you're also going to begin to notice is that it might be that some of these foods don't taste quite as good as you thought they did or that after the first two or three bites, you stop tasting them anyway and you start automatically eating. Hmm. That's interesting to know because if you're automatically eating, then your body is not so aware you're eating and you might find yourself overeating. Isn't that interesting? And then you're going to notice how you feel when you're done eating. And then you're going to notice how you feel, say, half an hour later or an hour later. Let me ask you a question through a story. You see, I very often am speaking in front of large live audiences around the world at schools, universities, large business conferences. And here's what's really fascinating. I will often ask the audience to make a noise that's demonstrative of the way they feel when they're going to eat a pizza. So I go, okay guys, we're about to order pizza. Make the noise that represents ordering a pizza. And you hear noises like this, yeah, way. And I go, all right, now everybody, make the noise that represents the way you feel half an hour after eating the pizza. And this is the noise. Ugh, ugh. They all know that pizza makes them feel bad, but they eat it anyway. Isn't that interesting? We're going to change that. By the way, I'm not saying you're done with pizza for the rest of your life. What I'm saying is we're maybe going to change the way we look at pizza because once we start paying attention to that feeling, here's my new question for you. What if pizza made people feel that way with the first bite? Would they ever take the second bite? No. And so we're going to pay attention to that food timeline. We're also going to pay attention to what motivates us to eat. Like I said, that triggering emotion. So each of the videos this week is going to guide you through more and more increased consciousness about the way you eat, increased awareness and mindfulness of your food decision paradigm, the way you choose to eat and the way you feel afterward. That's what this week is all about. It's also about beginning to notice the food industry really beginning to notice what's going on in the manufacturing process and in the marketing process and in the lobbying process of the food industry. I actually am hoping that at some point during this program, you're going to start to get mad. It's possible you'll get mad at me once or twice too, but what I'm really hoping is that you're going to get mad at the food industry. Like, let me give you one example. Refined sugar. 
One of the reasons that refined sugar is in so much of our food is that refined sugar is known to stimulate your appetite. So if you're a food manufacturer and you want to sell more food, you put sugar in the food because it'll make people eat more. And if you really want them to eat more food, what you also do is cut down the nutritional constituents in the food. You basically make the food void of, of nutrition. And then when people eat it, they still feel hungry. We're talking about wide scale deceit. We're talking about an industry that needs to be brought to justice. Like I'm telling you, we, we are really talking about an industry that is all about profit and doesn't give any, any consideration to your health whatsoever. I don't care how they fortified it with this and how they fortified it with that. And it's all full of 11 central this, you know, essential this and essential that. No, the food industry for the most part is really fundamentally manipulative and only about their profits. And I want you to begin to notice that in the advertisements. One of the best examples I can give you of this is that I found somebody sharing with me a really beautiful video. I'll probably share this story with you again, but I just want to touch on it real briefly now. They sent this beautiful video over to me and what it was was a collection of CCTV footage that somebody had purchased. They'd gone out and hired all this CC. They, buy, they bought it. They licensed this CCTV footage could. And it was all footage that was people doing amazing things like just random acts of kindness and just just beautiful activities like you know so you see an, you know a bank machine camera captured somebody dropping their wallet and then somebody coming up behind them picking up the wallet and bringing it to them and and the little old lady trying to cross the street and these two men come and grab her by the arms and gently walk her across the street like just these moments where you're watching this video going man this is just I'm just proud to be a human which of course these days if you watch the news it's not always easy to be proud to be human right but this video was amazing and you're feeling all these feelings and 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 love and connection and gratitude and just at the peak of your emotional experience they flash up a logo coca-cola i'm not kidding you what do you think that is that's called anchoring what they're doing is getting you to experience a peak emotional state and linking their logo to it a peak emotional state and linking their logo to it we're talking about a pavlovian response you remember pavlov and his dogs what they're basically doing is getting you to feel a certain way and then get you to link that feeling to their product they will come to anything to get you to have their product and so that's one of the things I also want you to pay attention to this week is look at the advertising. Notice, for example, I, I've been amazed to find that when I travel in the United States, I don't really watch TV. I might go into a hotel. Sometimes the TV's already on or maybe I just feel like watching a movie. Put it on. There it is. The TV's on. A commercial comes on. What's the commercial for? Almost always, I'm going to see a commercial for some or other food chain. All you can eat this. The best seafood in the world. Beautiful steaming plates of food. Remember this and I'll tell it to you again. That steam is not steam. We used to have a film studio in Northern California where we worked on all kinds of great movies and all that fun stuff, and we did commercials. So I can tell you something. To create that steam, they sprinkle a chemical on the food that makes that steam. That chemical is so toxic that they can't throw that food in the garbage because if animals eat it, they will die. The food industry will do anything to make their food look amazing. And by the way, have you ever had the experience where you walk in and you see a picture of the food and you think, oh, I'll have one of those and you order it and the food never looks like the picture? That is demonstrative of the entire, entire industry. And so I want you to pay attention to this stuff. I want you to notice it because they are manipulating us. And that's another key thing that I want us to pay attention to this week. Now, Sometimes when people begin a program, they start to worry about, well, am I going to be giving up any freedom here? I feel, you know, freedom is a big value of mine. Let me tell you something. If you know me or if you get to know me in the future, you will know freedom is one of my highest values. I enjoy a sense of personal liberty and freedom. And so I'm very fascinated by this issue of freedom relative to food. One of my clients from Scandinavia once said, Eric, I just don't know that I can do your program because I have a perception that you're going to take away a lot of stuff and I'm not going to feel free. And I just, I love feeling free about my food. And I said, that's interesting. I can understand that. What do you feel free to eat right now? And he goes, well, I feel free to eat pizza. I feel free to eat ice cream and cookies. And I go, excellent. I said, if there was pizza or ice cream or cookies here right now, could you not eat them? And he says, well, what, what, what do you mean? And I said, well, could you not eat them? And he goes, no, no, I couldn't not eat them. And I said, well, you know what? Then you are lacking in freedom. What we want to do is give you the freedom to choose whether or not you eat the food. Does this make sense to you? Now, another question that comes up very often people at this point is they're like, well, Eric, what do you mean no exercise? I mean, how can we lose weight? How can we get healthier? How can we get more fit with no exercise? So let me be very clear. Exercise 
is not a way to go from unhealthy to healthy. Exercise is a way to go from healthy to healthier. The challenge when people use exercise to try to create health where there was none is that basically what they're asking their body to do is do a phenomenal amount of work with the wrong fuel. And so they can often end up damaging themselves. Also, if people manage to lose weight using exercise, here's what happens. They lose weight to use exercise. In other words, they're burning more calories than they're eating. And so in so doing, what they do is create this problem that if they ever stop doing the exercise, boom, they're gonna gain weight. How many times have you seen this where the total athletes in high school and college end up becoming massive later in life? Why? Because they were so active in sports that they were eating a phenomenal amount of food. Then when the activity went down and they sat behind a desk or what have you, then suddenly they started piling on the weight because they didn't modify their food intake relative to their exercise. And so what we want to do is focus first on getting our nutrition right then we can focus on exercise. Now in the meantime, I am absolutely for intentional movement. That is increasing the amount you move. Get yourself a pedometer or frankly, every phone has the app, right? Count your steps, see how many steps you're taking every day. For now, don't try to change it, but you may find over the coming weeks that you wanna move and get yourself up to like 10 or more thousand steps a day. So I'm not gonna push you to do any real exercise. What I'm gonna suggest is don't park close to the front entrance of the mall park further away and walk in, skip the escalator, walk up the stairs, create some intentional movement for yourself. And maybe, maybe toward the end of the program, there might be some specific reasons for recommending particular exercises. And we'll talk about that then. And lastly, I want to ask you something. Why are you here? Why did you come? Why did you invest your time? What inspired you to be here? I know from experience that the answers come from across the board. There are people who come to us as peak performance athletes that are simply looking to increase their performance and endurance. At the other end of the spectrum, there are people with phenomenal amounts of weight that they want to release. And there are people with really serious health concerns that they would like to cure themselves of. There are other people that are just sort of in an average position where they might want to lose a little bit of weight here and there. There are many different reasons for coming here. There are people who want to have better sleep. There are people who are having chronic headaches and like them to go away. There are people that are having arthritis pain and other inflammation related issues. There are people that have routine digestive challenges and stomach aches and they're hoping that by improving their health, these things will go away. I want to be very clear. Nothing about this program should be taken to be medical advice. Not one thing. What I will say is this. You will always find yourself capable of healing better when you have optimal nutrition and reduced toxicity. So medical intervention might be necessary for people from time to time, but medical intervention when people have not yet first optimized their nutrition and reduced their toxicity is ridiculous. We first fix ourselves as best we can. And then very often the very symptoms that we thought we were going to have to go and turn to drugs or medical treatment for can actually go away. I will tell you that it is not uncommon on this program for people to report that their blood pressure numbers drop low enough that their doctors take them off their blood pressure medication. We have routinely had situations where people come to us that are type 2 diabetic and then at the end of it their doctor says, that's a little odd, your numbers don't match type 2 diabetic anymore. So we're going to have to call you pre-diabetic. Well that seems odd, doesn't it? You should be pre-diabetic before you become diabetic. So we had to coin a new medical term called post-diabetic. We created this term and now we actually see it being used because it's wrong to call somebody pre-diabetic when they're on the downside of the challenge. We've had people come to us with issues like asthma and allergies that the symptoms completely go away or are dramatically diminished as they go. I am not promising these cures to anybody because they're not cures. What I'm saying is that many of the symptoms that we suffer in life from low energy up until major diseases are at the very minimum contributed to by or influenced by our diet and our lifestyle. So the first, first job in improving your health is to improve your nutrition. The first job in improving your health is to make sure your body is getting everything that it needs and not so much of the things that it doesn't. And so that's why we're here. And I want you to get clear about what your motivation is. What is the end picture for you? What does it look like? If this works out perfectly, how does your body look? How do you feel? Get that image really clear. Get that feeling really solidly in your body because there are going to be times on this program where it's tough. I'm not going to pretend they're not. And when those times come up, I want you to think about something. I want you to imagine right now that you don't have a cell phone with you and you're in your car and you're driving toward a meeting and you're a little bit late and you're driving somewhere unfamiliar. 
and you're a little bit lost. And so you pull over and you ask for some directions. You pull in, they give you the directions. They tell you, yes, you're on the right road. Keep going this way, but when you get to the traffic lights, turn left, then drive down that road, and then you'll hit a speed bump, and right after that speed bump, your destination is on the right. Good, you get back in the car, you're driving along. You're driving along, you're driving along. You hit the traffic lights, you turn left. You're feeling good, you turn left. You drive a little further, you keep driving. The problem is they didn't tell you how far down this road to go. It gets to the point where you've driven far enough down this road where you're not sure you're on the right track. You get far enough down this road where you're not sure you're on the right track. And guess what? You start to doubt. You start to doubt the program. You start to wonder if you should turn around. You start to wonder if you should give up. It's at that point that, you know, people might share ideas with you. Oh, look at this blog I read about this food. Look at this other diet. Look at these supplements. And you might suddenly start to doubt because you've been going down this road and it hasn't been feeling so good. And then all of a sudden, bam, you hit the speed bump. And all of a sudden, you're filled with joy. Even though it would normally scare the hell out of you to hit a speed bump that big, you're filled with joy because you know you're at your appointment. And what I want you to know, the speed bump in this program is that there are times where it might be tough. I might ask you to take a holiday from something you weren't expecting to take a holiday from. I might ask you to take a holiday from a series of foods that might end up making you feel some low energy. You might not feel good. You may have cleansing reactions where your skin rebels a little bit or where you have a little bit of a cold or a flu. All of these things are absolutely normal and they are the speed bumps that should let you know you're on the right track. So when they happen, I want you to smile. I mean it. If you suddenly feel like, wow, I am having a whole different bathroom experience here as I'm changing my diet, I'm a little constipated or I've got diarrhea or any of that kind of stuff, then I want you to smile and know, hey, this is part of the program. If you wake up one morning and you got like no energy, at some point in the program we've made some change and your energy is like flagging away, then you go, hey, I must be near the summit. I want you to recognize that those are the speed bumps and stay committed and stay the course because the program works. And so to recap for you this week, here's what's coming. There will be videos for you each day this week on the weekdays. Then there'll be another video on Monday and each day that week. There'll be two videos a week after that. Every Friday, including this Friday coming, you will receive a series of enhancements, little adjustments that we're gonna make as we guide you through this process. You will then have the buffer zone to choose when you take on those enhancements. And let me be clear, the buffer zone is not an opportunity to reset the clock and bring back all kinds of stuff. The buffer zone is simply a choice to choose, am I taking these enhancements now or am I waiting until Monday? And you're making no changes to your diet this week. You're gonna eat just the way you were before and if there's foods that you've been secretly wanting, you're gonna allow yourself to have them because you're gonna be paying attention to your dialogue and you're gonna be paying attention to your food timeline. How does this food make me feel? You're really gonna get conscious and the videos are gonna remind you how to do that each day. And you're gonna drink six to eight glasses of water every day and do your breathing exercises. The journey has begun and it's gonna take you amazing places. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank <laughs> you.